Hi and welcome to Mrs. Long's video lesson on the poem The First Day After the War. This is by the South African poet Masizi Konani. Just a little bit about the context of the poem. Okay, so it sounds like it's quite a generic title. Um, the First Day After the War could refer to a lot of wars or struggles, but in the context of this poem, we're looking at the South African setting. And so the war, we can read that as the struggle for equality um, in the setting of apartheid South Africa. And so after the war would be the end of segregation, moving into a democratic society. And the first day, um, the poem looks at the initial reaction of the citizens to this um, new regime, this newfound freedom, particularly um, the people who have spent years, generations, decades um, being the ones who were the oppressed. So this is our poet, born in South Africa. Um, he was banned during the apartheid government, like many writers were, and spent some time living overseas. And when he returned to South Africa in the early 90s, he then became Africa's poet laureate and was the first South African poet laureate. So a very prolific, very respected poet. Um, and spent a lot of time lecturing as well. So this is our poem. We heard the songs of a wedding party. We saw a soft light coiling round the young blades of grass. At first we hesitated. Then we saw her footprints. Her face emerged. Then her eyes of freedom. She woke us up with a smile saying, what is this day that comes so suddenly? Sorry, what day is this that comes so suddenly? We said, it's the first day after the war. Then without waiting, we ran to the open space, ululating to the mountains and the pathways, calling people from all the circles of the earth. We shook up the old man, demanding a festival. We asked for all the first fruits of the season. We held hands with a stranger. We shouted across the waterfalls. People came from all lands. It was the first day of peace. We saw our ancestors traveling tall on the horizon. Now you should already be getting a feel for the sort of joyous celebratory um, approach of this poem and you'll notice that it's free verse, it's just one stanza and lots of run on lines and enjambment um, which supports the content of this kind of um, spontaneous out outpouring of celebration. Um, also, there's a lot of sound devices, a lot of repetition and parallelism, which falls in line with the, um, the oral tradition, specifically of praise poetry um, in the South African context. So it really is a poem meant to be said aloud rather than read. There are two sort of different sections. Um, the first few lines, the first eight lines deal with the reaction of the people as they realize that the change has come. And then the last lines looking at the celebrations of freedom. So if we look at the poem in smaller sections, you'll see that there's the repeated use of the pronoun we. Um, and so that creates a sense of togetherness and inclusion. Um, and it's repeated throughout the poem. So you've got the idea that the speaker of the poem is identifying with a larger group of people. So we heard the songs of a wedding party. Now, songs, we think of celebration and um, sort of any sort of party we associate with music and songs. Now, specifically, the image of a wedding party is interesting here because it's not they're not celebrating a wedding, but a wedding symbolizes the coming together of two different parties. Now, if you think about the South African context, um, where, where before democracy and before the end of the apartheid, um, it was all about division, about keeping groups of people separate. So the image there of a wedding party is a lovely way to describe the new beginning of people coming together and going ahead as one rather than as separate entities. We saw a soft light coiling around the young blades of grass. So lovely um, symbolic imagery there. The young blades of grass could be um, the new life, the young people um, who are kind of the, represent the future of the country. 
<laughs> and the soft light would be sort of the daybreak of a new day. Soft is a lovely um, word to describe that it's not a harsh um, changeover from one thing to other, but rather the gradual dawning of a new day or a new era. And you'll see there on the note about the sound devices, the sibilance there and so is soft. It's a lovely soothing sound as well. Then the description of the people. At first we hesitated. Now, why would you hesitate? Well, you can imagine if something has been fought for, for generations and generations, as freedom in South Africa was, um, it would be difficult to believe perhaps that it had actually come. If you think of the greater context of the ending of wars, you can imagine people who'd spent, um, you know, years and years in oppression, um, in fear, it would feel almost too good to be true when that all ended. But the confirmation comes when they see her footprints and her face emerge. So here we've got freedom, the new era being personified as a woman who is sort of gradually emerging to this warm welcome. And the, the lovely use of their, um, excuse me, exclamation mark there um, shows you this growing sense of excitement. So the footprints represent the evidence that she's been there, could also symbolize a path to the future. Okay, so we've got this gradual realization coming on that this new day has dawned. She woke us up with a smile. Okay, so we've got a friendly face of freedom saying, what day is it that comes so suddenly? So we've got the, the lovely direct speech there, of freedom speaking to the people. And it's slightly ironic, I think, that she asked it's come so suddenly um, because it was something that was so long awaited for. But again, it's almost as if you waited and waited and waited and all of a sudden it happened, it was there. We said it's the first day after the war. So the confirmation there that the, the struggle for freedom is over. Now we have um, sort of a picking up of the pace uh, We've now, the, the speakers or the people in the poem, the, the country, the people represented by the we have confirmed now that the war is over. And now we've got the celebration. So without waiting, so they're not able to contain themselves, we ran to the open space. Okay. So without waiting, we, that speeds up the pace with the lovely alliteration there. And the open spaces, obviously, um, you'd need a big open space in which to celebrate, but also representative of the fact that people could now move freely, which is not something that was allowed to everybody during apartheid, specifically with restrictions on um, where people were allowed to live according to their skin color. Eulilating, some lovely onomatopoeia there. I'm not going to try and um, impersonate somebody who can eulilate because I will definitely not be able to do it any justice. But it's this beautiful African expression of emotion. Um, it can be uh, joy or sorrow. Obviously, at this, um, in this context, it's joy. So people ran into the open spaces, the mountains, the pathways. In other words, they could go anywhere they wanted, calling people from all circles of the earth. Lovely um, reference there to circle as a symbol of um, unity and calling everybody. So everyone. Uh, is included in the celebration. And that's a, another lovely element that comes in in this poem in that uh, it's not just one side or the other who's celebrating, but because we've got this, this sort of overarching idea of a wedding party, both sides are celebrating. And so people from all circles of the earth are there to celebrate. And that comes in more strongly in the next few lines where they talk about holding hands with a stranger. Okay, so this freedom has brought people together. Um, and those of you who um, perhaps have relatives who were alive um, and remember what it was like in South Africa, specifically when Nelson Mandela was released from prison and um, we saw the end of segregation coming, there were these massive gatherings of celebration and you would see people of completely different, um, from completely different walks of life getting together and celebrating because um, they were now able to be together. It wasn't prohibited for them. And 
no matter what side they were on before, everyone was happy that a new um, dispensation was was coming in and everyone was, was able to celebrate freely. So it's a, that's an incredibly powerful image um, of South African history, held, holding hands with a stranger. Going back a little bit, they shook hands with the old man. We sh Sorry, we shook up the old man, demanding a festival. Now, the reference here to the old man could be um, symbolizing the previous generation who perhaps had become so um, used to the status quo that they had almost accepted their lot and given up fighting for something better. So they had to be shaken up and reminded that there was something to celebrate. And a festival, you know, linking with the idea of a party, it's not just um, a little gathering of people. A festival is a massive, like a large scale celebration. Um, and the enthusiasm there in the fun that they shook up, you know, you can imagine them going to old people, taking them by the shoulders and saying, it's happened, it's finally happened, demanding that they have a festival and asking for the first fruits of the season. In other words, only the best thing is fitting to celebrate this new season um, that has come up upon them. And then shouting, that lovely onomatopoeia again, you have the ululating, you have the shouting across the waterfalls. People came from all lands. Okay, again, the idea of people from very diverse groups coming together and uniting. Um, it was the first day of peace, that lovely um, like declaration there. And of course, the use of the word peace, um, a direct antithesis to the idea of war in the title. And then our last line, which um, takes us out of the, <clears throat> the sort of um, physical reality of the people on earth um, into a more spiritual idea linked with the African belief in ancestors and the importance of ancestors in their life, particularly um, if you think about in the African context how people's ancestors would have spent their entire lives or generations of people who would have fought for equality. And so the idea of we seeing our ancestors traveling tall, it's almost as if the ancestors now have their dignity back. They're traveling tall. They can be proud of what their people have achieved. And the reference to the horizon could also, I suppose, um, have this idea of looking towards a brighter future. So a lovely poem um, full of full of sound, full of movement, uh, full of joyous, sort of effusive celebration uh, to represent the way people in South Africa would have felt, possibly in this context, um, at the end of their own war, which was the segregation in the country. So I hope that's helped you uh, understand the poem a little bit more clearly, and we will see you next time.